Okay, good afternoon. My name is Yuan and I'm doing my PhD in polygamy. I'm honored to share with you this study and also it's my PhD research, the future step of basic design between synesthesia didactic and virtual learning. So let's start with what is synesthesia. It is defined as a perceptive phenomenon, metaphor, and the representation. It's a relation between wireless registers. It is a normal phenomenon for everyone, is that you don't look at an object separately, but you recognize the shape, the color, the texture, the feeling at the same time. And it has been studied in decades by artists and musicians. And it's also defined by the researcher as a design method, which you stand into the position of a sensory first and then start your design. So, how could synesthesia work on design education? And how would the teachers teach synesthesia in basic design? I have two applications. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is to better help you understand. I have two groups of bottles. And without a name, it's easy to tell which is soda water and which is coffee. You can see from the shape of the bottle, the visual elements they choose, and also the liquid of the color. And on the right, we have two posters of the movie. It is also easy to tell which is a horror movie and which is a love story. Sometimes love can be both, but that's another story. <laughs> and this is two applications that all in China in the same college, and the first one is an interview document with my colleague. She asked the students to listen to your music last for like 30 seconds, and the students are supposed to draw this picture based on the feelings they achieve from the music. And it is interesting that the music is the same, but the visual presentations are quite different. And some students try to formulate the path of how the music moves. You can see some are going backward, some are centered, and some are circling. And the students are also asked to write a short explanation of why they draw the joints like this. Students said that the circle shows a simple melody of rep represented jumps followed by the addition of triangle and square by the changing of the music. And the student B said that the music starts from the left, which is quite interesting because he can feel the direction of the music. And the white circle shows the simple jumping of the melody. And in the second part of the music, he adds other elements, such as triangles and squares, to show the speed of the music. And the second application is actually my workshop with the students in the same college. I give them two kinds of sugars, which one, uh, the first one is the fruit flavor and the second one is the anise. It's quite interesting that the students in the first group prefer to choose the color that is warm, like yellow, red, and light green, and the visual elements they choose is more regular, like circles, triangles, and square. But the second group kind of suffered when they taste the sugar and also do the drawing and they prefer to use dark colors, such as dark blue, black, and gray. And they also choose to use the irregular visual elements, such as the messy that you can see. So, this is where we start to go deeper into our research. It's about how to balance synesthesia, how to use synesthesia in basic design education, and how to do innovative teaching through this. Innovative teaching has five categories, and uh, in the research of design didactic, the most important three are the teacher skills development, the curriculum, which contains the famous flipped classroom, the experimental design, the direct storytelling, and the online education mock, etc., and also the toys and resources such as um, virtual reality, argument reality, mixed reality, and the virtual learning environment. The technology and the teaching method provide opportunities for the future design education, but a systematic development, development has lagged. Uh, this is a 
This is a survey that we does to find the case studies which use new techniques in education and we didn't stuck in the part of design, but we chose 20 case studies from 13 different majors. And the aim of this survey was to analyze on the path of curricular design and to also under the five categories that I mentioned before and to understand how researchers choose the teaching methods to achieve their specific teaching goal and uh, how and what kind of problems they faced during the learning process. The table is too boring to watch, so let's just move to the conclusion. That all the 20 projects has a part of tools and resources, of course, and the augmented reality, virtual reality, and the e-learning platform are mostly used. There are also other tools such as MOOC, e-learning platform, 3D software, and the web-based model. But just 12 of them considered the assessment for the students. For example, in the formal course, they ask the students to deliver, to deliver a paper. But when they use the augmented reality to teach the course, they still ask the students to deliver a paper. They didn't consider the assessment for the students. And only half of the researchers considered to change the structure of the course by adjusting the course time by the amount of student groups and the content they teach. We can have a small discussion related to the survey that the teachers' development of innovative teaching methods are linked in some way and there is not a systematic guideline or framework to let consider the whole picture. And the courses could be innovated by a complete design chain of curricular from the techniques they choose, from the teaching forms they prepare, and the assessment that they give to the students. In this research, we have three macro areas, which is basic design, innovative teaching, and synesthesia. And the middle that they concerned in using new techniques. We have also formulated um, the main points of new technology could benefit basic design education. And, oh sorry, this, there are three, I add four actually. So it's the first one is multi-sensory interaction. The second one is three-dimensional design method, which refer to synesthesia. And the second one is instant feedback. And the fourth one is group work. That's why we choose the virtual learning environment as the new technology for basic design. Here I give you two examples. The first one was the e-real lab. This uh, this technology has actually been applied in Harvard for the medical treatment by the students. The students can have an immersive environment when an accident happens. For example, a car accident and the victim just lie on the floor and the ambulance come in with the noise. It's, it's quite get you anxious. And the students could do the surgery with the model that is in the center and they could follow the guideline provided on the wall. And this one is called Ludomi. This is a project designed for the children with intelligent problems. And in this case, the sensor of the smell are also added to have a more immersive environment. We could also put this three macro circle into this cube, which is a three-dimensional framework. You can see that the cube itself is basic design and the synesthesia as an aspect of them. And the innovative teaching is um, the lines that frame the framework. It can be also put this way, that basic design as a field, synesthesia as a method, and the virtual environment as a tool. And this is actually a future experiment that is ongoing, not finished now. But I would like to give you a quick glance. This is the websites and the interactive videos that we choose to explore the possibilities of teaching a basic design in a cave. And 
the first and the second one was the pattern website that to formulate. Sorry, I can't. It's too small, it's here. It's a website to generate patterns. You can see that uh, when you move the mouse, you can capture some visual elements from the pictures that you choose, and the website has generated the patterns automatically. And the second one was the lighting art that yeah it's pretty thank you that you can choose the color you like and generate the pattern. The third one is actually a study polytechnic book called Synesthesia Piano. I didn't record the sound, but as you can see, you move to the keys of the piano and the color appears automatically by the order. And the last two was to discover the immersive experience between a laptop and a cave. We have a big face. And this one was the online tour of a museum. You can see the exhibitions in detail and you can also follow the arrows to go to the other rooms. When we tried these cases into a cave, there are some discoveries that uh, the experience between the laptop and the cave was quite different. It is a 3D modeling for example, for architecture, are not so well functional in the cave because you have to move a lot to a precise, a specific, a small action. But the study of patterns have more possibilities for the students because you can actually see the size of the visual elements. So uh, this is still ongoing, and my speech finished here. But you are all experts in this area, so any suggestion and advice are welcome. This is my contact. Thank you.